will come back. In this step, we would look at some of the important annotations which are related to update time and create time. Some of the times, a few applications have the requirements that I would want to store when this specific row is updated last time and when this row was inserted. I would want to store the created time of that particular row and also I would want to store the updated time of that particular row. In those kind of situations, Hibernate provides a solution. Remember, this is not a solution which is provided by JPA. So this is more of a custom thing which is provided by Hibernate. So let's say I would want to store private. I would want to be able to store the updated date or it's called the last updated date. And I would also want to be able to store the created date. I'd want to store both the date and the time as well. So in these kind of situations, you would use something called local date time. This is one of the things which is introduced by Java 8. Earlier, we were used to using java.util.date, but that's not really a good thing because it kind of represents date, time, date time, and all that kind of stuff. That's why in Java 8, it was made much more clearer and there is something called local date time. So here, we would want to store date and time. That's what we are specifying by using this local date time. And here, local date time, created date. Now, these are the two columns that we want to make use of. However, we need to tell Hibernate that this is the last update date column. So every time you make a change to this row, this column needs to be updated with the timestamp. How do I tell that? The way you can say that is by using an annotation. Update timestamp. Update timestamp, if you look at it, as I said earlier, it's a Hibernate annotation. So it's a Hibernate annotation, not really a JP annotation. So that's something you need to remember. And the other annotation which is present in here is at created timestamp. Now that we added in the update timestamp and the creation timestamp on the last update date and the create date, there are a couple of things that we would need to do before we are ready to test them. The first thing is data.sql, right? So in the data.sql, we are only populating the ID and the name. We are not populated the created date and the updated date. So I need to populate this. Data is directly inserted into the database and this does not go through Hibernate. So we have to manually put the data in here. Last updated date and created date. Let's put a enter so that it's much more clearer. And created date, last updated date, values, created date, last updated date, values. That's cool. Now let's put the values in as well. The values, I would use the sysdate function. So sysdate, for now it would populate the both the things as the same. So whatever the sysdate was at that point of execution the of the query. So that's cool. So the data at the insertion is now cool, right? Now what we want to do is if you look at the play with entity manager method, this is called at startup of the application, right? So in our demo application, what are we doing? We are calling the play with entity manager. So over here, let's create a course. So we are already creating a course. So what I'll do is I'll also get an existing course and we'll update something on it. So what I'll do is I'll say course to, instead of creating a new course, I'll get it from the database. So we have a find by ID method in here. So let's use that find by ID and let's say 1001 and course two dot set. We want to set the name to update it. So 1001 L 1001, what's the course name? It's JPA in 50 steps. Let's set the name to that. And now let's stop and start the application and see what would happen. What we have done until now is a couple of things, right? We defined an update timestamp, a creation timestamp, and then we updated the data.sql with the new data for sysdate, I mean, new columns. We put sysdate as the default. And then we went into demo application. We were calling the play with entity manager. And over here, we are seeing that uh, we are creating a new course, web service in 100 steps, and also taking one of the up existing courses, JPA in 50 steps, and we are updating the description of it. Okay, that's cool. So let's go to the database and see what's happening there. This is the row which is created through JPA, right? So this is the one web service in 100 steps which we are inserting in. So this is having a created date 
and the last updated date that's cool so now this is having a created date and the last updated date and this is the 10001 thing which we updated so which we wrote code in the entity manager to set the name to jpa in 50 steps updated so for this one you can see that the updated date is different from the created date so for all the rest of the stuff 10002 10003 the updated and created dates are the same so you can see that even including the milliseconds they are same however for the 10001 because we, when we updated the row what happens the updated timestamp gets updated so this gets updated and this is different from the created timestamp you can also see the queries which are fired in so when we look at the queries which are fired in you'd see that when i'm sending the insert into course what is it doing it's sending created date last updated date so here are the created date and the last updated date for the web services in 100 steps course and when the course is being updated it's sending the created date the last update date and the name you can see that the created date is being sent from whatever was there in the database the old value was picked up from the database and sent as created date but the new timestamp so you can see that this is getting fired at 15 21 30 182 right so at the new one 15 21 30 180 is being sent as updated timestamp the old value of the row is being sent for the created date what we looked at is how to ensure that your created dates and the last updated dates are automatically populated for all the rows in your database this is done by using a couple of hibernate annotations at update timestamp and at creation timestamp until the next step bye bye